Welcome back to Uport. As you can see from my flight planner, there are a few gaps. Now, some of that I'm probably never going to be able to fix because if you look at the international stands, there just aren't enough international flights being offered to actually fill them up properly. I... Or at least I think that's what's going on. It's very hard to figure out how the auto planner decides to fill flights in. Um, what I might do is switch it off briefly and manually fill in as many of these as I can. Um, starting with... Let's just start from the top. Air Strata needs a medium. Both mediums are international, All right? Can't allocate, why not? Why can't you allocate to that stand? Huh? International flight, international stands. Oh, medium and large, that's why, okay. Medium. Back to the today. Medium. Can't put it too close to the current time. That's fair enough. Chuck these two in like so. Alright. One medium and one large. The medium is domestic. Don't think we've got any domestic medium stands available aside from the emergency stand. Large International. Alright, I'm probably not going to be able to fit any more on this day for the large flights, that's fair enough. And those three are medium. Alrighty. Medium, international, and again, there aren't really any spots in my domestic medium stands available. Um, at least not for the near future. like to see if I can get all of these flights allocated so I'll give it a shot. You can definitely assign more small planes though. Goodness knows why so few of them seem to have been assigned. Alright, medium international. Sure we've got plenty of room for that. Small flights. Um, all right, can't fit any more on today. You Havana, you may as well go on the Havana stand.
And it's frustrating that you can't just say, oh, we'll make this international stand domestic and just assign some of the flights there because they have to go through passport control and you'd have to reroute all of your passenger flow. It just becomes a nightmare to manage. We can slot one in there. Right. Uh, maple. We should definitely be able to get some more of these in, particularly that one. Goodness knows why. Ah, that won't be helping. You're supposed to be enabled. Oh, yeah, I've switched off the whole lot. Never mind. I'm just not paying attention. All right. Uh, Mabel, you can go on here. Mabel Medium International. All right. I'm sure we've got plenty of room for that somewhere. Go to Sunday. Easy. And again, domestic, medium. I think I mentioned in the last episode, I have a theory about how the flights get assigned and it has something to do with sort of working from the top. And if there aren't enough flights to fill up a stand, it just sort of stops. But I really don't know. It's just a, a hunch really, it's not even a theory. just a weird behavior. I haven't quite worked out what's going on. All right, that's the other half of Maple. There's nothing for OK Air. Olympus. Right, so, you can definitely see it's possible to assign all of the flights that were available. But the question is, why didn't the auto planner do that? We'll switch it back on for now, and let's have a look at what we've got. 131, 121, 101, 78, yeah. And it will ta taper off towards the end of the week because, of course, more flights will turn up and need to be assigned. Let's get it going again and start keeping an eye on whether the airport's coping because I've got a feeling there might be a few issues. I've seen a few delayed flights over the last episodes and that's got me a little bit concerned and let's just make sure this is going to behave. Center band. <laughs> All right. Um, repair in progress. Sixty-nine percent. Condition. Oh, condition is like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fair enough. That's the hangar itself. Okay, so in another six hours it should be done, if that's fine. One of the areas I'm concerned about is security. And that seems to be coping quite well at this precise point in time. Let's have a look at how many international flights we've got right now. Yeah, it's more or less peak human traffic.
and it seems to be coping just fine. Could I spend the time to actually set up all of the queues? Absolutely I could, but I just don't really want to. <laughs> and let's have a look at what these guys are. Franchise stuff, ah, of course. Yes, fair enough. I was wondering who all the staff were in white. I didn't think they were passenger agents. This, this maybe does need cues. Well, let's set up these ones at least. If I can select the right thing. Oh, and they're completely invisible on this floor. mistaken, the queues actually do make a difference in terms of... Um, oops. I keep right clicking and there's a road underneath that's getting in the way. Um, the queues make a difference in terms of how well the passengers behave. If you just let them all congregate in a big lump, they'll get pathing issues more often than if you actually have proper queues. Now, for the inbound, it's not so much of an issue because you can see they're all spread out. Yes, they're queuing up and globbing up, but it's not stacking on top of each other kind of bad. Whereas when you get a couple of planes landing at once, and you get a few hundred people all in the same stream, like these guys here, without the queues, they end up sort of waiting so long that they just walk over the top of each other and that's where you get your pathing problems. Right, that plane got dealt with, good. Alright, that seems to be coping just fine actually. Alright. We've got a lack of staff here right at the moment for some reason. that terminal could use an extra couple of security staff. I'm sure that can be arranged because I'm pretty sure if I look down here I've still got way too many sitting around doing nothing. Yep, okay. Let's reassign, say, four of them to... yep. Of course, I said four, not three. Thank you very much. Cool. Get out of that mode. Yeah, see, this is what I'm concerned about. Why are these flights getting delayed? This one. You're waiting on fuel only. So you're not delayed by much. But it's the frequency of getting delayed that's concerning. This plane was supposed to leave two hours ago. It hasn't even got off the sand yet. Do we have planes backing up on the taxiway? That's the other question. Doesn't look like it. And this setup I've got here where it's two-way and there's two lanes seems to be working better than this whole one-way loop. 
not that there appears to be a problem with the one we loop at the moment, but quite often, like, planes here can't reverse out for ages because three or four other planes need to come past first. to get over there and couldn't for some reason. Well, you're on the wrong floor for starters. It's not helping, but why? <laughs> Maybe it's worth checking our security zones, particularly when you've got six and seven overlapping like that. This section, uh, we've got two international zones again. Yeah, there's definitely something going on. Guessing it's in here that's the problem. I said international zone, thank you. Must be placed inside secure. Well, it's definitely secure now. first, just to get it out of the way. No. That's got it. Okay. Now, thankfully, we don't have to deal with international anywhere else. Let's just look at the security. Zone 2. Yes, that is its own little bit, but it's joined onto zone 3, so we could actually put a door in here. Uh, it's going to look weird, but let's do it. If we put in crosswalk. Let's be placed. Ah, I can't put it there. Um, right. What a out. If I just ignore that and not worry about it looking weird and just put in the door. Verify that is joined. That is now a single zone instead of two. Okay. Pretty sure that entire stretch is security zone four. What are these random blobs? Do we have any building there? No. Security zone 7 and 6 are just two random squares in the middle of nowhere. Well, I don't know if I can fix that. <laughs> I can't draw over this. Can I get rid of it? Aha! Right. Two, four, five, and eight, and nine. So that's probably always going to be disconnected. That's fine. This is a single zone like it should be. That's a single zone like it should be. Yeah, I think that's about as good as we're going to get it. The only way to make it better would be to join up four and two. Which is possible actually. We just put down some footpath from here to here. And it's secured. Now it's actually possible for ramp agents to get to these stands without passing through a service car. Will that help or not? I'm gonna guess not, but it looks better. 
fewer zones to think about is probably a good thing. And who knows, maybe it will help with some of the pathing issues. And once again, we have random other vehicles in this structure. This structure is supposed to only contain catering trucks so that they get priority next to the catering depot. Which undoubtedly means, yep, here we go, they've been reassigned elsewhere because they couldn't fit. I think the only way to prevent this happening would be to make sure every single vehicle is assigned to a structure somewhere. Are there any more in here? Yes, of course there are. Okay, so we've done a little bit of that. Let's have a look at our flight roster again. We're on to the next day. Hang on a second. You're running late. Why? Catering and boarding. Well, the catering trucks are here. One of them took a little while to get there. And again, that may be related to this issue. Also, why? You don't belong here, you belong in Terminal 2. I'll let you do your job. Alright, get assigned back over here where you belong. Um, yeah, so flights. <laughs> Again, there's plenty queued up that haven't been assigned. I just don't understand the logic. Is it maybe just hitting some sort of memory limit and failing? I don't know. I think some flights have been assigned. Because we had... Something like 130, 120, 101. It's obviously assigned some flights, it just doesn't seem to assign them very far in advance, and maybe that's where I'm getting confused. Maybe it only assigns them sort of a day in advance, not, not a week in advance. But even so, this is today. I'm sure if I were to look through here, I'd be able to find this one, for example, which could go on that stand if it were not set to auto planet right now. Why? Why aren't you assigned? I'm not going to spend the entire episode just going through and putting flights in here, but I do want to see. Well, I do want to see how much my airport can handle, basically. But there's only so much time I can be bothered spending on that. Um, Alright, let's do a little bit of beautification while we're at it. Because it looks like I didn't actually put in different flooring for some of these areas. I noticed, uh, I think it's this floor. The bathroom's never got done. Okay, that's set, that's set, let's do this staff room, you can have green carpet just for the fun of it, green carpet, red chairs, very Christmas. Mm, right, that floor's fine, but this one's not. I like to do wood for the 
shops for some reason, so let's stick with the pattern. this closed because the contract failed? Yes, it looks like it. Uh, the only one you can accept is that one. Go for it. What about you? You're closed as well. These were all assigned contracts at one stage, but they've failed for whatever reason. Not enough passengers probably being the number one issue. Not enough sales, I mean, uh, and not enough sales comes from not having enough passengers in that area sitting around for a long time. What about this terminal? That store is definitely open. Um, sorry, what about this terminal? That one's open, this one's not. If you remember back a whole bunch of episodes, I built this staff room in this corner to overlook a large portion of the airport, but I never ended up doing anything with the rest of this space. That's kind of unfortunate, and in hindsight I could have put that room right here, but obviously I didn't, and now there's just a massive empty space. Also, my game is lagging like crazy right now. Pause and let the game catch up. Can I zoom in to get out of whatever is causing it to get confused? There we go. Um, and that's a big part of the problem with this game in general, but this game in particular when you get to a very large airport size. There are too many active objects all at once, and as a result, the game basically just runs out of processor power, regardless of how good your processor might be. One thing we can try to do to deal with that is reduce the number of contractors that we have. definitely don't need 173 deployed contractors when all I'm doing is just changing some floor tiles and putting in the occasional wall or window or whatever. I'm not doing major construction anymore. Not having them deployed saves me a little bit of cash and hopefully saves me a little bit of processor power.
Right, well, I'm not sure how long this video is once again, so I might just cut this one off now, and see you in the next episode. Until then, bye-bye.